Before we begin, please be advised that Atwood Manor contains graphic violence, cursing, alcohol and drug use, and domestic abuse. This podcast is intended for adult audiences only. It is a murder mystery, after all. Thanks for listening. Date today is May 23rd, 1958. The two-day storm that ravaged the coast has finally subsided, and it is now partly cloudy and a cool 62 degrees. I am sorry to say, however, that we will be starting this broadcast with some troubling information. As of this morning, ten people were found dead on the small offshore island owned by the Atwood family. Only five survivors were found and are currently in questioning. Local police advise everyone to be on the lookout for missing suspect... Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird don't sing... Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Adam, you can't sing that to our baby. Why not? It isn't appropriate. Oh, come on, Tara. Lighten up. Take one down, pass it around. 98 bottles of beer on the wall. (laughs) (laughs) Do you really think this is a good idea? If you've got any better ones, I would love to hear them. I'm just worried. You know how Gran can be. Anybody says anything she doesn't like, and bam, she's all over them, like a passive-aggressive attack dog. And don't even get me started on Howard. Hey, my grandfather can at least try to behave himself. He promised he would, just like everyone else. You mean how we promised to when we announced the engagement? It's been five years, dear. I know that wasn't exactly his best moment, but he's had time to get over it. Plus, we have the baby now. Even if they can't get along for our sake, they have to for hers. Dining Hall, 11 a.m. Cooper, how many times have I repeated this? The blade of the knife must face inward towards the plate. How must it face? Inward, madam. My apologies. I will fix it immediately. Thank you so very much. I'm sure you'll remember next time. Mm -hmm. Doris, please make sure to greet every family as they enter. Have you tidied all the beds yet? Yes, ma'am. I just finished. Very good, dear. And And don't forget to dust the mantle and supply the wood for the fireplace. Already done, ma'am. Well done, dear. I know I can always count on you. (laughs) Unlike some. You always know how to make me look bad, don't you? Of course. It's my main mission in life. Remind me why we put up with that woman? Would you rather be sleeping in the luxurious beds here, or the bus in Brooklyn where we could be kicked off at any moment? All because some rich white prick wants to sit down for a stop he could walk to. Fair point. Doesn't make dealing with her any easier, though. Yes, well, good people don't get rich. Doc. Noon.
really. A mansion on an island? Amateurs. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Careful, Granddad. Here, let me carry that. Thomas, just because I'm old doesn't mean I can't carry my own damn luggage. First off, language. Second of all, remember what the doctor said about overexerting yourself? I don't care what the doctor said. What makes him so smart? Uh, an actual medical degree, Gramps? Fine. At least let me do something. I know what you could do, Howie. <laughs> yeah, because that's definitely not classified as overexerting. Agnes, Louise, you know that is not appropriate lady talk. Virginia, darling, nobody here is going to believe that you're innocent. We all know that you've had your moments with Richard and... <laughs> Not Richard. I, however, keep my personal affairs private. As should you. Oh, don't worry, I won't tell. Richard, how are you? So lovely to see you. Hey, Agnes. I'm getting a drink. Howard, Tommy, do you want anything? Scotch, please. I'm going to need it if we're seeing those damn Atwoods. Dad, how many times do I have to tell you I hate being called Tommy? Whatever you say, Tommy boy. <sighs> Vodka. Vodka? You sound like Agnes. No, we're getting you some whiskey, a true man's drink. Um, what's wrong with being like Agnes? She's Coolsville. I like this kid. I knew there was a reason you were my favorite, Thomas. There is a lot wrong with being like Agnes, actually. Now hurry up and get on the boat. We were told to be there at 2 p.m. sharp, and I abhor being late. Ooh, I'm Virginia, and I abhor being late almost as much as I abhor fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, get in here. Um, yes, Mom. Parlor, 1.13 p.m. Good afternoon, Mr. Lovin. Please, Doris. Call me Adam. Very well, sir. And Miss Tara, you're looking so well. It's wonderful to see you. You as well, Doris. Come here and give me a hug. I've missed you. And this is little Bethany that I've heard so much about? Oh my goodness, Cooper, get in here! Woman, if I don't get these potatoes peeled in time, I... Oh my goodness. Isn't she just the most precious little thing you've ever seen? Well, she is. May, may I hold her, madam? Of course, Cooper. Your family. Hello, Miss Bethany. Don't you just have the most beautiful blue eyes? I've never held anything like you in all my life. All right, all right. Any more of this and I might be tempted to become a family man. I gotta go back to my potatoes. Thank you for allowing me to hold them, Miss Terry. Oh, me next! Tara, dear, good afternoon. And Adam, pleasure to see you as well. Oh, I see you brought the baby. What a lovely little creature you are. Anyway, Tara, you two will be sleeping in your old room. Doris, can you take uh, the luggage up? Oh, no need. We can get it ourselves. Where's Grandad? Nonsense, you're an Atwood, and Atwoods do not perform servile tasks. Doris, their bags, please. As for your grandfather, he's somewhere around here. One moment. And what? Yes, just one moment, dear. Margaret and Edward's bedroom, one fifteen p.m. All right, Edward, you can do this. It's been forty years. Maybe he's changed. It's a proven fact that nobody is the same at 24 as they are at 63. It, it's science. Yeah, yeah, it's science. God, this is going to be a long two days. Thank the Lord we stocked up on booze. Yeah, that's it. I'll have Doris fetch me some whiskey before he arrives. is isn't the first time whiskey's calmed my nerves, and it certainly won't be the last... God, I wonder if his eyes are still that shade of blue, that that deep ocean blue. Damn it, Edward, he's been over you for years. Hell, he has that pretty new trollop wife. 
young and brunette and only after his goddamn money, but he's too blind to see that, mesmerized by those fake tits that her last husband probably bought her. Yeah, perfect wife he's got himself. And I'm stuck with the wicked bitch of the West. Oh, Howard. I know, I know you don't like her for that. I know you don't actually like her at all. I'm just a bitter old man with a broken heart pretending same as you are. Fuck. Maybe I'm gonna need that whiskey now. Hallway outside Tara and Adam's room. 1.15 p.m. I see the guests have begun to arrive. Just your sister and her family. Early as usual. Would you like help with their bags? Could you carry this one for me? Thank you, Derek. Of course, Doris. How is my dear sister doing? Oh, she looks just lovely. And she has her baby with her, little Bethany. Simply the cutest thing I have ever seen. Bethany? What an elegant name. And that's good to hear about Tara. It feels as though I haven't seen her in ages. Since they first got engaged. Ah, yes, that disaster. Well, hopefully the families can behave themselves better this time. And if not, at least we'll get some entertainment out of it. Do you know Father will be coming? Dear, I have no idea. You know how Joshua can be. Commitments aren't his strong suit. Trust me, I know. Parlor. 2.58 p.m. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Atwood Manor. Thank you, um... Doris, ma'am. Doris! Thank you, Doris. Here are my and Richard's bags. Which room will we be staying in? Oh, yes. I can show you. God, this place is just as tacky as I remember. Dad, hush. You promised to behave for Adam. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, welcome, lovets. Doris and Cooper will be happy to help you with your luggage. Dinner will be served at 5 p.m. sharp. Until then, make yourselves at home. Don't mind if I do. Where do you keep the liquor? Straight to the juice as usual, I see. Most ladies don't drink until dinner. I am not most ladies. Apparently. Well, very well then, this way. I don't get why you don't like her, Gramps. She seems all right. Yeah, wait till dinner. Oh, Howie, knock it off. Let's go see our room. <laughs> yeah, sure, honey, after I get a glass of the strongest thing they've got. Dining hall. 5 p.m. sharp. Welcome to dinner, everyone. Please be seated. I would like to start off with a toast. As you all know, we are here to celebrate the marriage of Tara Atwood and Adam Lovett, as well as our new great-grandchild. To Bethany Lovett. Yes, to Bethany Lovett. We will be holding the ceremony at 2 p.m., so I expect everyone to be present in the courtyard at exactly 1.45, wearing their most elegant attire. Oh, darn. And here I wanted to go in my birthday suit. Please, Agnes, have some class. Yes, Agnes, this is far too classy a place for that kind of talk. <laughs> what would you know about class? Excuse me? I'll get that. Oh. I wonder if that's Uncle Lawrence and Auntie Sandra. It shouldn't be. They informed me they wouldn't be arriving until early tomorrow. Oh, good evening, Mr. Joshua. What a pleasant surprise. Surprise? I was invited, wasn't I? Yes, of course, sir. Well, the family's right in here. Daddy, you showed up. Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Of course not. You're father of the year, after all. Good to see you as well, son. You know, it is polite to RSVP prior to showing up to an event. Last I checked, this is still my home, too. I don't think I need to RSVP to go to my own home. 
Maybe you do, when you haven't been to it in years. Trouble in paradise? My family's matters are none of your business. Then perhaps you shouldn't broadcast them to the entire dinner table. And perhaps you should keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry. What was that? Howie, please. We're their guests. Guests for a joke of a wedding. And you, Adam. I can't believe you're marrying one of them. I said... Keep your mouth shut. Gentlemen, this is not appropriate for the dinner table. <clears throat> I'm sorry, dear. <laughs> she really beat the backbone out of you that bad, huh? I'll show you some goddamn backbone. <laughs> Edward! Try me. <laughs> what is wrong with you two? All I asked for was one fucking weekend! I cannot believe I thought for even a second that you could cut this bullshit feud out for me. Adam, I... No, for Bethany. I actually fooled myself into thinking that either of you cared enough about her to get along. You two should be ashamed of yourselves. Upstairs hallway. 7.52 p.m. Jesus Christ, some people are trying to drink, you know. The hell was that? <laughs> Wait, Louise? What's wrong? Production. Written by Gabby Rose and Anthony Lampo. Production by Matthew Colley. Directed by Gabby Rose. Sound editing by Mark Abrigo. Voice acting by Jonathan Fortin, Ashley McMullen, Brian Smick, Lannon Scott, Gerardo Paz, Tristan Holler, Mark Abrigo, Valerie Foshman, J.R. Dunn, Ricky Soto, Steven Satiricon, Gail Y., Caitlin Marie, and Sofia Riales. Intro and outro music by Panoram. Find them on Spotify or follow them on Instagram at Panoram Band. That's P-A-N-O-R-A-M. You can find us on Instagram at Atwood underscore Manor underscore podcast. Subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Atwood Manor so we can keep bringing you great episodes. Welcome to the family. Try not to die. <laughs>